over to Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Mystery of the Kingdom Abundance. And uh, abundance, if we look back on where I grew up in uh, Texas, uh, a lot of the farmers and uh, ranchers in my area uh, uh, developed their farms and ranches and grew bigger and bigger. And but they did, and may have had the livestock and a lot of equipment. Uh, but uh, they didn't earn a lot of income over their lifetime. And so it was often said that uh, the farmers and ranchers in Texas uh, uh, lived poor, but died rich and their heirs uh, received a lot because they put a lot of emphasis on real estate and equipment and all kinds of things like that. So it, it's the kinds of things you can see and, and uh, um, value by money and uh, that's the way it is in the world. Uh, so people in the world like to store up and they like to uh, look at that and that's their abundance, that's their wealth. But the kingdom operates in a, in a different fashion. And uh, really uh, abundance in the kingdom relates to your relationship to Jesus Christ. Because he said in John 10, 10, I have come that you have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. So if you want to live the abundant life, that's what we're talking about today. It's a totally different perspective than what the world has. And it's not measured in terms of uh, dollars or monetary terms at all, but it's, it's measured in relationships and in relationship uh, to Jesus Christ because he's the one that gives you uh, the abundant life. Also, another difference between the world uh, and the kingdom is that in the world, it's a, a concept of storing up and storage and stockpiling. And, uh, but in the kingdom, it's a flow. It's a kingdom flow. Mm -hmm. It's the river mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. the river of God. Hallelujah. And so uh, we want to measure in the natural uh, how much things we have and uh, how big a home we have and uh, how much real estate and how many stocks and bonds and all of those kinds of things. But in the kingdom, it's a river of flow. And in that river that flows from the throne of God, uh, there is gold and there is precious, mm, precious, uh, uh, all kinds of precious things in that kingdom and healing and uh, prosperity okay. and peace of mind, all kinds of very precious things flow through that river. Mm -hmm. So I really want you to change your perspective about what abundance is. Don't, don't look at kingdom abundance as you would look at worldly abundance and uh, faith in the kingdom. If you have, if you're a person in the kingdom and you're operating by faith, you're focusing more on God's, what God has in his hand, than the scarcity that you might have in your own hand. What does God have? Well, he has everything. Amen. And I want to, uh, just the bottom line of this uh, message is live life to the fullest in whatever state, state you are you're in. in. Oh, let me say that again. Oh, hallelujah. Well, this is what I'm talking about abundance. Yeah. This is bottom line. Live life uh, to the fullest, fullest. in whatever, whatever state, state you are in. in. Now, mm -hmm. so that word fullness, mm -hmm. is, fullness is really important then as a part of this particular message. And I want you to see where the fullness of God is. It's about the fullness of God. And uh, just a, a quick uh, hint, it's in Christ. The Hallelujah. fullness, the Hallelujah. fullness of God is in Christ. So let's look at a couple of verses in Colossians. We'll start with Colossians uh, one nineteen, and then go to Colossians 2.9. Sherry, read these, please. For it pleased the Father that in him, Christ Jesus, all the fullness should dwell. In him, in Christ. In Christ. It's in Christ. Colossians 2, 9. For in him, Christ Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It means the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so where is it? It's in Christ. Mm. Well, but the good news is, and we can pray this, this is a prayer that uh, uh, Paul taught us, and that is from Ephesians 3, 19, and it can be in you. The fullness of God <laughs> can be in you, you, and you can pray this prayer from the 
chapter 3 of Ephesians and to have the fullness in you. So read this verse. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3, 19. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of of God. Okay. So we know Hallelujah. All the fullness of God is in Christ. Mm. But you can be filled with the fullness of God. Woo. And it's a prayer. You need to pray it. I I prayed it yeah, I mean. every day for my life. I prayed it every day of my life for a year. And then the Holy Spirit released me and I, I didn't feel that I needed to pray it anymore. But I've also prayed it over you. But you can pray Amen. it yourself. Amen. That you will be filled with the fullness of God. That's what abundance in the kingdom of God is a relationship with Jesus Christ. How close are you to him? And is he in living in you? It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. He has the fullness of God and that fullness of God is the abundant life. And so if you can tap into it, Mm. Now, I'm going to look at a couple of characters in the New Testament, and, and this is the rich young ruler. We're, get, we're going to find out a lot about abundance here, and the other one is Zacchaeus. But we'll start with uh, Matthew uh, 19, and what I want you to know is that the rich young ruler asked this profound question, how may I possess the life of the age to come. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me say it again. Oh, yeah, say it, it again. It's a profound question. We're going to answer it tonight. How may we possess the life of the age to come? Now, mm -hmm. we are more familiar with the term uh, from, let's say, the new King James. I'm going to ask Sherry to read it out of that, and uh, we'll see what Jesus answered him, but I want to give you just an overview of what Jesus said. He said, obey me and follow me. Obey me and follow me. That, mm -hmm. So that's a, a good way. Uh, just put it in a nutshell. If you want to possess the life uh, of the kingdom, kingdom to come. Yeah, the age to of come. Of the age to come. You obey Jesus and you follow him. Because all of the fullness of God dwells in, in him. him. And the, I tell you, the abundance of this world cannot compare with the abundance of God, God that is deposited in Jesus mm. Christ. Hallelujah. 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 So let's Hallelujah. read this out of the New King. Shana Boho Shada. Ia la Boho. Ia la Kashada. Ia Boho Shada. Ia la Boho Shada. Ia la Boho Shada. And the Lord would say, Surely. I want that river to flow in you. I want it to pour out upon you. I want it to touch your body. I want it to touch your mind. I want it to touch all that you are. I want it to touch and flow through you that I may manifest myself through you. I say unto you that I am your abundance. I say unto you, I am your life. I will shut up. I say unto you that surely you are mine and I am yours. And my banner over you is love. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Beautiful. Thank Beautiful you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This Thank is, you, Jesus. This is a significant message. I hope you get Thank a hold you, of Lord. it. Thank you, Lord. A hold of it tonight. Let's see what uh, the rich young ruler said uh, to Jesus and what Jesus said. Uh, boy, I want you to know that all Jesus said was to obey him and follow him. And that is the same for all of us. Mm -hmm. See, there is no formula. And you might say, oh, but Jesus told him to do this. But, but that's not a formula for you. The, the formula is obey Jesus and, and follow. follow him. Okay, go ahead. Matthew 19, 16 and verse 21. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And in verse 21, Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Okay, so the abundance in the kingdom is our relationship with Jesus Christ. He has the fullness I mean, of God I mean, within and, him. Yeah. Now, I, I just want to take go back to that verse 16 uh, for a moment, and 
In mm -hmm. this translation, it was ter it was said uh, eternal life. In other translations, it was everlasting life. The that word, uh, let me see if I can pronounce it. it it's Ionios. Ionios. I. Io neos. Okay, that's good. Uh, Io neos. Okay, that's a very important word, and, and it has such a rich meaning to it. Uh, and and so when the people translated it, they tried to get down one word. But let me tell you what the word really means. He he's looking for this, and it, and it's often translated everlasting life or eternal life. But what he really said in the Greek was. How can I get hold of what has no beginning, what has no end, what has always been, and what will always be? Mm. <laughs> this is the answer. This is the answer. Of the, uh, this is mm. the question of the ages. How can I get hold of? How can I possess the life that has no beginning, that has no end, that has always been, and will always be? Oh hallelujah. oh, hallelujah. It's not just, you cannot boil that down to one word. No. Uh, hallelujah. Everlasting, see, it begins today and it just goes on and on and on and on. And if you put eternal in that, you just, you kind of jump into uh, heaven and, and you go on and on and on there. But that's not really one word. He didn't use just that one word uh, definition of those. He said, how can I possess? The life that has no beginning and has no end and will always, has always been and will always be. Mm. And I love this translation here. It's called the New Testament for everyone. I'd never had read it before, but when I read the words that they chose, I knew this, they were on to something here. Whoever translated this was on to what the rich young ruler was really asking. So I'm going to ask you yeah. to, to read that same verse again, but out of a new translation, different translation. Suddenly a man came up to Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what good thing must I do if I'm to possess the life of the age to come? That's what we're talking about. Hallelujah. Today. That is abundance. To possess the, the life of the age, age to, to come. come. Okay. So Jesus prayed, told us how to pray. He said, pray this way. Our, I'm talking about Matthew 6 now. He said, pray this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus gave us the model prayer to have to how to have abundant life. The abundant life is to bring it out of the supernatural realm into this life. Oh, hallelujah. That's what he said there. How may I possess the life of the age to come? And that's what we all want. And Jesus already has already told us to pray this way. Pray to bring what's in heaven, to bring it down. Yeah. You bring it down to you. So we're talking about a flow, a river, and you're reaching into heaven. You're reaching into the supernatural realm and bringing it into your life and into your family's life and into your children and into your grandchildren and into your city and into your nation. You're, you're reaching into the supernatural realm and bringing that life into this life. That's what the young ruler was asking for. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And Jesus told us how to pray for it. Now, there was that... Discussion continued on with his disciples, uh, and, and they wanted to know. Well, the rich young ruler, he, he seemed to be disappointed because he didn't really like the answer. He didn't understand the answer. If he had understood the answer, he would have immediately gone away, sold what he had, obeyed God, obeyed Jesus right there, and came and followed oh, him. And he would have had a hundredfold return. And so the disciples kept the dis dialogue going and said, we've given up everything and we followed you. What, what's in it for us? What, what are we going to get? And, and let's look at what Jesus said in Matthew 19. And go ahead and read this verse, Sherry. And everyone who has left houses, our brothers, our sisters, our father, our mother, our wife, our children, our lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold 
and inherit eternal life. Okay, so he's telling them how they're going to get eternal life or everlasting life or possess the life of the age to come. Okay, but now you might say, well, that's all in the sweet by and by, but Mark wrote a little different there. He was writing down the same the same concepts and the same things that happened that day. But in Mark 10, I want you to read it because he added. Oh, he added something no. important. Yeah. He added a little phrase. He added a little phrase that says, oh, we don't have to wait to eternity. We can bring things into this life. Oh, hallelujah. Now. Right now. Let's read this. So Jesus this answered exciting. and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there's no one who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now, now, now in this time, in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the age to come, in the age to come eternal life oh hallelujah how can we possess hallelujah what's in heaven how can we bring it into this realm possess the life of the age to come and we'll do it now right now a hundredfold now not in the sweet by and by Re receive it right now that's what jesus said in mark 10 you can read it yourself mark 10 he said receive a hundredfold now in this present time and uh, life, everlasting life, life now uh -huh. and life that goes on and on, possessing the life of the age to of come. the age to come. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We're talking about the fullness and we're talking about Zac uh, first uh, the yet rich young ruler. Now we're going to go to Zacchaeus uh, because Zacchaeus, uh, he uh, evidently Jesus gave him uh, some uh, commands too. We we didn't hear Jesus' side of it. In uh, the rich young ruler, we heard the response of what the rich young ruler was to do. We heard from Jesus. But now we're hearing from Zacchaeus uh, what he's going to do. And, and this makes an incredible statement. Salvation came to Zacchaeus. Now he, he was an old uh, uh, tax collector and people hated him and he probably overcharged people. That's how he really got wealthy, and so he must have had a lot of money. And uh, salvation came because Jesus came to his house. He accepted him, and uh, his household accepted Jesus. And now we know what Zacchaeus said. He said, I'm going to give half of my, what I have to the poor. Now, the rich young ruler, he said, give all of it. And that's the reason I'm saying there's not a formula here. The only formula is obey Jesus, what he tells you to do, and, and follow, follow him. him. Oh, hallelujah. So read about Zacchaeus. Uh, Luke 19, verses 8 and 9. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I will restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, listen to this, Today salvation has come to this house, because he he also is the son of Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's come to his house. He lived, he lived just like Abraham, outside of the law. Oh, oh hallelujah. 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 In abundance. You, you know, when we look back on Abraham, he was a very wealthy person, but he also had a relationship with the Lord. Amen. And it was that covenant that he had with the Lord that he was blessed, and his descendants yes, were blessed. and he was going to be a blessing. And, and so that's the way uh, Zacchaeus lived, just like Abraham. He was blessed, and he became a blessing to other people. Now, I want to read it out of this other translation, which I thought was really interesting because I hadn't picked up on this before. But his whole family was saved. Zacchaeus's family was saved. Read out this translation. It says, which translation is it? It's the N-O-G. Okay, in the name of God. Okay, then Joshua said to uh, Zacchaeus, you and your family 
have been saved today. Woo. You and your family Hallelujah. have been saved today. <laughs> You've shown that you too are one of Abraham's descendants. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you want Jesus to say that? Yes, to you? yes, you I do. And Amen. your whole family Amen. saved today. How? Why? Because here's the, here's the plan. Obey Jesus, whatever he tells you to do, and, and follow, follow him. him. Ooh, I, when I saw that verse, I thought, we just need to read it. Because I hadn't picked up on it before, because it just talked about Zacchaeus and his house. Uh, and I hadn't really thought, oh, his whole family was saved. That's yeah. what Jesus yeah. said. And I trust Jesus. I believe Jesus knew what he said and knew what he was saying when he said, your whole family has been saved today. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, I've got just a, a kind of quick uh, way to give you some applications to this message today. And there are three things I believe that are very important because these are the things that the Lord has said to do to live this abundant life. Now, I've explained to you what the abundant life was. Now we're going to talk about how to live this abundant life. And, and what the Lord said, be quiet, be attentive, and be content. Oh, hallelujah. These three things are very important. We're going to discuss them. Be quiet, be attentive. So if you're going to obey him, if you're going to obey him, you have to be quiet and hear what he says. Just all of the distractions, all the disturbances, get away from them. Put them all down. Take, go to a place where you're a quiet place. Be with the Lord and attentive to what he says. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Because we're talking about how can I possess the life of the age to come? Hallelujah. Bring it out of the supernatural realm and be content. And we're going to look at all three of those. But I'm going to start with some verses uh, that just talk about this quietness. And we'll, uh, the di there's a difference between just being quiet and that's getting rid of the distractions. I, I know we've all got uh, 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 busy schedules and busyness all uh, involved in a lot of things, a lot of demands on our time. But, but he said, be quiet, be attentive and be content uh, wherever you are. So here we are, be quiet. So we've got to just, this is the physical realm. This is in the physical realm. We have in our natural realm, we have to, we have to go to a quiet place, a hiding place, hiding where we place. can get together and get alone with the Lord. And, and I have uh, three verses I'd like for Sherry to read that are about to, uh, about quietness. And there's the, uh, from Psalms and uh, uh, Habakkuk. Habakkuk and Zechariah. Psalm 46.10, he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Hallelujah. See, when, when you get quiet, then you can begin to hear him, but also he's going to be exalted. So you need to pray. Amen. You need to Amen. worship him. That's in that quietness. In that quietness, Time. You, you need to exalt him, exalt the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Habakkuk 2.20. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Well, that's you. Yo, wait a minute. Let's just pause here for a minute. Where, where is the holy, holy temple? temple. That's you, you are. You are the holy temple. He's there. You've got to recognize. Hallelujah. He's there. He's inside of you. Be it's quiet. <laughs> Be quiet. Okay, so listen. Hallelujah. Habakkuk 2.20. 2, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let your flesh be silent before him. <laughs> Let all distractions oh, be gone. Hallelujah. 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 Three things to do. Be quiet. Be, be attentive, attentive. And be content. Okay, go ahead. For the next one. Zephaniah 1.7. One seven. Be silent before the sovereign God. For the day of the Lord is near. Yes, it's here. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated those he has invited oh you've been invited you've been invited to a sacrifice hallelujah and he has consecrated you hallelujah Ooh, praise the name of this jesus. is an exciting exciting you, message jesus. to me hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah be quiet be attentive lay down all of the busyness all of the distractions all of the disturbances mm -hmm. get get those down lay all yes, that stuff yeah, down. down all the chaos all yeah. of the all of the uh, things in your mind going around or be quiet and be attentive 
be attentive, let his word. Yeah, you know, attend, yeah. attend to my words. Yes, says yes, Proverbs. yes. You got to attend to his word, be listening. And you're not really going to be able to listen to him if, you, if you're not quiet, if you're not quiet. So we need to be quiet and we hear what he says. Be, you know, James put it this way, uh, be uh, slow to speak, quick to hear. Hear. Hey, oh, slow to wrath. Wrath. Hallelujah. Now, I, I, I'm wrapping this up. I'm moving to be content. Whatever situation you're in, be content. See, this message, and, and let me just go back. In, nine, in October of 1982, Jesus spoke to me, and he said he wanted me to teach people how to be rich. Well, I'm teaching you this tonight. And of course, I've, I let these nuggets out all the time. Uh, different ones, but th this is a fresh revelation. Uh, uh, this message tonight, uh, uh, but it's about to live in the age to come. How to possess mm -hmm. the life of, of the, the age, age to, to come. come. Okay, so what I see, and this is what I told Jesus, and you might think I was arguing with him, but I just wanted to make my uh, position clear when he said he wanted me to teach people how to be rich i said i don't want to teach the message i've heard from over the, and over again over and over from the television all those ministers they say this is their in the nutshell oh, send me a lot of money and you will be blessed that's the message and i said i don't want them, i don't want that message jesus you're going to have to show me something different than that i'm not going to preach that message i know that's not the truth that's not the fullness no, no, that is not the fullness that's not the fullness of your message and so what we're talking about tonight is the fullness oh it's about the fullness hallelujah it's about the fullness of his message about abundance and, and it's the fullness of god is in christ and where is Christ? He's in you. He's in you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. So this message will work regardless of where you are. This message will work regardless of what state you are in. And, and I want to give you a couple of examples here. There was a, a, a woman, uh, Sherry and I spoke to a few days ago in, in an underdeveloped country, undeveloped country, uh, which I would call rather backward compared to where we are in this country at this age. Um, and they paid that person a different wage than they paid me. And although she taught at a university, although she had a university degree and she taught at a university, her monthly salary was 10 US dollars, 10 monthly salary for, for a month. month, for the month, for the month. She got ten, so it's not like it's not like me. I, I got more money than that. I don't. I don't know more than that. I got more than ten when I taught <laughs> at, at the university. Okay, so I, I have this home, and I have uh, my car, and I have some other things. And she doesn't have exactly what I have. But you have to take into account what state you're in, uh, and she can live fully where in the state she is in. She can live fully in the state she is in by embracing Jesus Christ because the fullness of God is in, in Jesus. Him. So the message I have Ooh, is not hallelujah. one that says, oh, everybody ought to come to the United States and do what we do here in the United States. No, it's wherever you are, you can have abundance regardless of what country you are in, what your government is doing, regardless of any of that, the, the abundance is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, and yeah. it, see, I saw it first in the life of Joseph, the young Joseph. Oh, hallelujah. In uh, Genesis. And he was uh, in slavery, but he lived an abundant life in slavery because God was with him and prospered him while he was in slavery. Because there's three points I want to make now to wrap this up about being content in what state you're in, whatever state you're in, be content. Be content, don't, don't have your mind uh, chaotic, and, uh, but be peaceful, be content, be satisfied in the state you're in. 
and because it's all related to your purpose. The Lord is wherever you are, whatever state, he will protect you. He will provide I for see. you and he will prepare you, you for promotion and for purpose, purpose. for Hallelujah. your purpose. Hallelujah. See, Joseph was yeah. sent slavery. Yeah. Then he was thrown in prison and, and he was still content. He, God still prospered him because God was with him in slavery, then in prison, and it was all being prepared to rule a nation. Oh, hallelujah. So this is the message I have. That this message works regardless of what state you're in. So what I the bottom line, remember, was live life to the fullest in whatever state you're in, whatever situation, mm. whatever circumstance you're in, live life to the fullest. And you do that by that by being quiet, being content, and being attentive to what the Lord says. So we're talking about contentment now and we're moving to full. Philippians, and this will be the last mm. that we'll be reading. Philippians. No. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I'm in. Whatever state he's in. To be content. Oh, he was content in whatever situation, yeah. whatever the circumstances. He was content there. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things. I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Now we'll Hallelujah. Go, we'll go down to that verse the 13 and read it again out of the transla another of, translation. This is out of the Amplified. Uh, because this shows when he, when he says, I can do all things, he's really talking about what God has purposed for him to do. Oh, hallelujah. So, let's look at this. Hallelujah. Philippians. I can do all things which he has called me to do. Which he has called you to do. Uh-huh. Oh, hallelujah. Through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. Oh, hallelujah. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Hallelujah. Oh, that's beautiful. Paul hallelujah. wrote this from the prison. Ooh. Oh, wow. I want you. I, you know, wow. I, we need to go over this. Hallelujah. Again. We need to, Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. This is just too I'll try. powerful. Hallelujah. Philippians 4 13. He wrote this shut up, shut out up. of prison when he's in prison. And he said, I have no needs. Oh, hallelujah. Start. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Okay. Hallelujah. I want you to know that's the key. If you want to be the live the abundant life, that's the key. You need to be content in whatever state you are in. Amen. Amen. And, and by that, I mean to draw out the life of the age to come. Oh, hallelujah. To this. And Help us, Lord, to do that. I, I just want to say three things, and we're not going to read any more verses, but I, I say that the Lord is going to protect you. If you're, yes. if you're in this position, you're, you're living the life of the age to come. He's going to protect you. He's going to be your refuge. He's going to be your strength. He's going to be your provision. He's going to bring your provision. Amen. That seek first the kingdom no, of God. God. All these Least other the things, things are going to be added to you. So provision. And, and then he's going to prepare you for your purpose. purpose. That's what he did for Joseph. When, when Joseph was in slavery, was in prison, he was protecting him. He was giving him the provision. Amen. Uh, and he was preparing him for his purpose Amen. to rule a nation, to be father to Pharaoh. He was preparing him. The same for Paul. Paul said, oh, I, I'm not speaking about needs here. I'm content. Whatever state I'm in, I'm content. So let's remember the, the bottom line, the take home of this message. 
live life fully. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Live life fully, no matter what state you're in. Thank hallelujah. you, Jesus. Thank you for being here. I'm turning Thank it you, over Lord. to Sherry. And I want Sherry uh, to pray for all of us to be filled with the fullness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The fullness of God. Thank you, Lord hallelujah. Jesus. That's a prayer. Thank you, Ephesians, Lord. from Ephesians 3, 19. Father, right now, I thank you for your fullness being in every one of us, that we are your temple, your holy temple, and you're there. Hallelujah. And I praise you, and I, I give you glory that you are bringing us in to the fullness of the age to come. And Lord, I speak that over this whole group right now in Jesus' name, that you will fill us with your fullness, that you will fill us with abundant life, that we will be content in the state that we are in because we know that you are with us, that you're there in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we have no needs. We have no uh, nothing uh, because you provide everything for us. And we give you praise for that in Jesus' name. I thank you for life. I thank you for helping us to live uh, in this, in this, to live in the age to come, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask that you take us there, Lord. That you take us out of this, this uh, mundane and, and and the fleshly world, Lord. That you will take us into that age to come. In the name of Jesus, that we might do the purpose that you have for us. And in Jesus' name, I release your purpose. I release your destiny. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.